Our final change maker of the evening is Jennifer Martin Del Campo uh, from the Department of Chemical Engineering. Uh, and she's uh, doing research under the supervisions of Professor Jan Kopaczynski in the uh, pro Process Engineering Laboratory, Catalytic Process Engineering Laboratory, and uh, Professor Sylvain Coulomb in the Plasma Processing Laboratory. Uh, and Jennifer's going to talk to us tonight about how you can harness the pl uh, power of plasma to produce fuels from greenhouse gases. Jennifer. One of the most important effects of global warming is the massive ice melt. And you will be wondering how a huge piece of ice that is melting is actually affecting us. I'm going to explain you why. Just like in the North Pole and in the South Pole, there's this huge glacier in the Hindu Himalayan region. And this glacier is melting. With the current policies, scientists expect that two thirds of this glacier will be gone by 2100. However, even if there's a radical change in the environmental policies, and we keep this increase of, um, and we keep this um, increase of temperature in 1.5 degrees by 2030, one third of this glacier will be gone. The problem is that this glacier is a water supplier of eight countries. Two of the most, um, the biggest ones and the most populated ones in the world, including China and India. So this is affecting two billion people. And in this region, it's known for having a lot of agriculture. So there will be a point where there will be floods, but afterwards, they will suffer from water crisis. Also, this region has a lot of rivers that are providing electricity through hydro dams. So no water means also energy crisis. So we are not only having, having an environmental disaster, but we are also having energy crisis, um, political issues due to the migration that there will be from these countries to another ones, and also economical issues. Two of the responsible gases from this global warming are carbon dioxide and methane. And the level of them in the atmosphere have increased since the Industrial Revolution. However, in 1950, there was an industrial boom in the, in the plastic industry, aluminum industry, lead petrol industry, and concrete industry. The problem is that even a small uh, amounts of uh, methane in the atmosphere are more hazardous because methane is 30 times more potent as greenhouse gas that are carbon dioxide. But carbon dioxide stays more time in the atmosphere. And we all know about this natural cycle of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So we can give a look in the past and look over the last 400,000 years, where this level of carbon dioxide has been increasing and decreasing every, every 100,000 years. But in 1950, with this industrial boom, and also with as a consequence of the Industrial Revolution, this level has never been higher. So it passed a level of 300 parts per million in the atmosphere. And now we are close to 400 parts per million. My colleagues today are making research looking for a carbon neutral future, to reach a plateau in this line, to keep it not growing up, but keep it flat. And all the efforts around the world are basically to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. But this means reduce the emissions, doesn't mean reduce the current level of them in the atmosphere. Is there something else we could do? What about all the greenhouse gases that are already there? Or are we coming to a point of no return? Well, here's where my research comes in. To decrease this level, do not make it carbon neutral, but make it carbon negative. If we focus in recycling rather than in reduce, we can actually do something. And what if we take these greenhouse gases that are waste and we produce a valuable product out of it? Then this process is called upcycling. And the reaction that does this is called dry reforming. Dry reforming is a reaction between methane and carbon dioxide to produce 
syngas, a mix of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And we have been told that actually carbon monoxide is pretty hazardous and toxic for our health. So why do we want to produce it? Well, when combined with hydrogen, this is like gold for the industry. And you might be surprised how many things here around you are made of this mix. Because syngas is used for power generation, also for fertilizers in the ammonia um, process, and chemicals in the fissure trash process for the production of liquid hydrocarbons like methanol. It's also a substitute of natural gas, transportation fuels, consumer products, hydrogen for oil refining, and also direct reduced iron. This is a precursor of a stainless steel, especially when we want to produce a stainless steel with low content of carbon. And we can see this in the water pipes in your houses or in the body panels in your cars. So actually, syngas is pretty useful. But if this reaction is so great, why are we not doing it? Well, it's because this process is high energy intensive. It requires temperatures above 700 degrees. And not only that, it also requires a catalyst. The catalyst is a material that speeds up the chemical reaction. So we can get the syngas. But the problem is that having high energy processes is going to make us create more greenhouse gases. Basically, we are not solving any problem. We should find another way to create syngas a valuable product that is pretty useful for our life. Well, luckily, there's another way. And this is called plasma. And before I tell you what I'm doing in the lab, I want to explain you what plasma is. In the next example, I want to show you um, in the upper part in the arrow, you have the state of the matter, as you know it. And in the lower part of the arrow, you have how the atoms are behaving in the structure. So plasma is the fourth state of the matter. So imagine you have a cube of ice. Then we give some energy to it. We are going to melt the ice, and we are going to get water. So the molecules are going to move more free. Then we give more energy to it. We are coming to the gas phase. So the molecules are having more energy, and they are moving here and there. They are more free. But now let's see we give way more energy to it way more energy than you can imagine. Temperatures close to a temperature of the sun. Then we will have plasma. We're going to start accelerate the electrons. And these electrons are going to hit the neutral molecules, are going to create ions and more electrons that are going to hit again the um, neutral molecules, creating ions and more molecules, uh, more uh, electrons. So at the end, we're going to have a pool of very active species consistent in ions electrons, neutral molecules, among other species. And this is called plasma. But you might be a little bit confused because I'm telling you that plasma requires a lot of energy. But we want to avoid high energy processes. Well, luckily, there's another way to produce plasma. And this is with electricity. A good example of this is a lighting in the sky during a storm or these plasma gloves in the museum where you touch and all the rays are coming to you. Well, these are not hot, right? We're touching them. Now, let me explain you how the plasma is acting in the dry reforming reaction. We have the reactants, carbon dioxide and methane, and then we're applying an electric field. So. When I apply electric field, these electrons are going to break down the molecules, are going to rip off um, the molecules, and they are going to ionize them, creating this pool of active species. But the molecules, they don't like to be charged. They like to be neutral. So the equilibrium, um, they are turning to equilibrium to recombine and produce syngas. In my project, I have developed a plasma reactor configuration called gliding arc where carbon dioxide and methane are injected through the reactor where an electric field is applied, breaking, uh, breaking the molecules. And if you see in the schematic these pink lines, this is where the plasma is happening. So we can see this pool of very active species happening there. So they are going to recombine, and they are going to produce syngas. 
If you are wondering how a plasma reactor looks like, well, this is um, my setup, the plasma reactor in the plasma processing laboratory. We have uh, power supplies, two of them, and a reactor. And I want to show you a video of how the plasma looks inside of the reactor. So it's pretty cool, right? We are creating like lighting in a bottle. Um, now let's see what I, how do we produce the syn gas. I perform two experiments, one with low current, this means less energy, and one with high current. I'm going to talk about first the one with low current. So when we have low current, we get some syn gas, around 7%. But we also measure the temperature of the gas inside of the reactor. Note that I didn't apply any external heating. So basically, all the temperature that you can see here is coming for the movements of the molecules, uh, for the reaction itself. So as you can see, we have this pretty steep slope with increasing temperature during the first minutes of the reaction. Then, at around minute 30, it reaches a plateau, the steady state. So, then we perform the other experiment. We are giving more energy to our process. So we were expecting more conversion. And we get more conversion. We have more singas. But giving more energy will also imply, logically, to have more temperature. But surprisingly, we didn't find it. We have a smoother uh, slope. And it reaches a steady state around minute 100. So the increase of temperature is not as high as in the other curve. Basically, all the energy we're giving to the process is being transformed into chemical energy rather than into thermal energy, meaning that we are producing more syn gas instead of warming up the gas, which is pretty good news because basically we're making more efficient the process. If we compare our best result with the conventional method of producing syn gas, we see a gap of 55%. But we also see a gap of 600 degrees Celsius in temperature. The question here is, how can we decrease this gap of 55% without decreasing the other gap of 600 degrees Celsius? Meaning, how can we produce more syn gas without giving more energy to the process? And this is where the second part of my project comes in. To optimize the reaction conditions and to combine also technologies to help the reaction, like plasma catalysis. As I mentioned before, the catalyst is this material that speeds up the chemical reaction. And there's this known synergistic effect between plasma and catalysis, where the catalyst is affecting the behavior of the plasma and the, uh, and the plasma is enhancing the behavior of the catalyst. So with this, we can say that um, plasma technologies are pretty useful to upcycle greenhouse gases, not only decreasing the current level of them in the atmosphere, but also producing valuable products like syn gas out of them. By reducing these effects, uh, by reducing this level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, we would be able to reduce the effect of global warming, meaning we will be able to reduce the melting of the glacier and avoid some future um, environmental, political, and economical issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jennifer. Questions for Jennifer? Yes, please. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, Max Scully, uh, mechanical engineering alumni. So uh, a little question about um, how the energy could be extracted from the syngas. So when theoretically comparing the energy input to creating it versus what would be output, what would be the overall efficiency of the process? Well, uh, currently I'm working on that. Um, I have measured the energy that I'm putting in my process. And with the high, um, the high energy process, high current, I have like around 120 watts. 
which is not so bad. Um, the output, I haven't measured it, but that's where I'm working currently now on it. Just a question. It, it's, I guess, my, what I think about it is kind of like you're, you want to vacuum the atmosphere in a sense, right? So, well, is that kind of what the what the end goal is, really? I mean, to reduce significantly, let's say, the carbon if content. If possible, it could be like, yeah. Now, like we are in the laboratory um, step, but the ones that we can optimize this reactor. Um, the beauty of that is that it, we can pass everything through the plasma and create this valuable product, so yeah. Hi, Jennifer, Maurice Melkaf, uh, alumni from uh, um, MBA. Um, I wonder if you've done any comparison with uh, carbon capture uh, cost and if uh, this is much more promising from that point of view. Uh, so far, I haven't done any comparison, but, um, well, one of the advantages of my process is that basically we are just not capturing the CO2 and the methane, right? So we are also producing syn gas, which is, as, as we saw it, it's uh, pretty valuable for the industry. So this is one of the advantages. I haven't made the comparison, but it's a plan that I have for the future. As a real non-specialist, uh, uh, you've got your source gases in your in your laboratory, and I'm wondering. I, I, I think I may, is carbon dioxide and methane there in the high atmosphere. Uh, if this works out really well, how, how do we get that to a plant on the ground? Well, that will be like <laughs> that will be um, another PhD, I think. <laughs> yeah, I will. Mean, Yeah, sure, surely the best way is to stick a plasma plant uh, on one of those places that generates yeah. a lot of... Yeah, that, Basically. you're not going to hoover the atmosphere. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer, yeah.